Let's talk about hernias. A hernia is a protrusion of any viscous, or viscous is an internal organ, through a weakness in a wall that normally contains it. Hernias are caused by anything that raises the pressure inside the containment cavity of the structure or weakness in the containing wall, focusing on the organs uh, in the abdominal cavity. Main causes of hernias include straining, right? So straining increases the intra-abdominal pressure through the Fausava maneuver. Lifting of heavy weights is also associated with straining. Chronic constipation, which may be habitual or uh, due to rectal stricture or abdominal tumors. Chronic cough. So here uh, you need to understand that uh, chronic cough uh, increases the intra-abdominal uh, pressure in most of the time. So you need to think of conditions that causes chronic cough. So those conditions include uh, chronic bronchitis, tuberculosis, asthma, and emphysema. In addition to this, a history of whooping cough in childhood may predispose to hernia in adulthood. Urinary outlet obstruction, uh, for example, benign prostatic hyperplasia and prostatic carcinoma in elderly, urethral strictures in young children and phimosis and meatal stenosis in very young children. Obesity, right? Obesity causes uh, the stretching of abdominal walls, resulting in weakening of the wall, and it separates the abdominal muscle layers and weakens the aponeurosis. Abdominal masses. A hernia can actually be an indicator of abdominal malignancy. Pregnancy and pelvic anatomy may predispose women to femoral hernias. Smoking causes defective uh, connective tissue metabolism, and this will lead to weakening of the anterior abdominal wall. Ascites, uh, thus accumulation of fluid in the abdominal cavity, uh, will increase the intra-abdominal pressure as well. Appendectomy, for example, McBain's incision may injure the iliohypogastric nerve leading to right-sided direct inguinal hernia. Congenital deformities, uh, and this uh, results in weakness of the abdominal wall. Examples include um, umbilical hernia and a persistent processus vaginalis, right? So uh, this will cause indirect inguinal hernia. Connective tissue disorders. Familial collagen disorders weaken the anterior abdominal wall and therefore predispose to hernias. And you can also uh, have an acquired collagen deficiency, for example, metastatic emphysema of red. Anatomy of hernia. A hernia consists of uh, three main parts, the covering, the hernial sac, and contents. So let's look at this uh, one by one, starting with the covering. So coverings are the layers of abdominal wall through which the hernia sac passes through, right? In long-standing cases, the layers become atrophied and fuse from stretching such that they are indistinguishable from each other. The hernial sac. The hernial sac is the peritoneal diverticulum containing the viscera. It has two parts, the body and the neck. The neck communicates with the abdominal cavity, right? So that's the communication between the abdominal cavity and the body of the hernia. The body is a blind pouch that can potentially house structures in it. For example, you have a loop of ilium here. The neck is usually well defined as in inguinal hernias and uh, in some hernias they, they do not have a sac. For example, epigastric hernia, some direct inguinal hernias and some incisional hernias. The width of the neck 
is very important in determining the likelihood of complications of hernias such as incarceration, obstruction, and strangulations. We will talk about them towards the end. The contents of the hernia. These are different types of viscera occupying the hernial sac. The viscera occupying the hernial sac are often uh, intraperitoneal organ and uh, often the hernia sac is empty and does not contain any visceral contents, right? So based on the contents, we can uh, have different kinds of hernias. For example, enterocele. Enterocele, uh, in this case, they can uh, contain small or large bowel, appendix, or cecum. At times, the intestines in the hernia sac may possess a mucous diverticulum, Right, so this will be called uh, literacy hernia. At times, uh, you can get a portion of intestine herniating in a manner that only a part of the intestinal wall herniates. This results in an, an intestine with only parts of its walls in the hernial sac. Conversely, this hernia produces partial obstruction. The wall that herniates usually the antimesenteric wall, that's the wall opposite that from which the visceral peritoneal reflects of the bowel and forms the mesentery. Cystocele is a herniation of the urinary bladder and it can be a sole content of a direct inguinal hernia or femoral hernia. Omentocele. This is a herniation of the omentum, also known as epiplosil. Sliding hernia is a hernia in which retroperitoneal organs herniate uh, through the hernia sac and form the posterior wall. They are thought to comprise of uh, 3 to 8 percent of all elective operations of hernia sac. And they are more common in adult men and young girls. In young girls, ovaries may herniate uh, together with the fallopian tubes. Classification of uh, hernias, right? So there are uh, three kinds of classification. There is clinical classification, etiological classification, and classification according to location. What you are looking at right now is the clinical classification. So hernia can be reducible or non reducible or irreducible that's not reducible and this can lead to complications like incarceration right so in a hernia can be incarcerated they can be obstruction or strangulation right starting with the reducible hernia this is a hernia that can reduce on its own uh, it can also be reduced by the patient or by the surgeon in the case of intestine, the intestine may start off by gargling and the first portion is usually difficult to reduce. With omentum, there is a daffy texture and the last portion is more difficult to reduce than the first. A reducible hernia has a positive cough impulse. Irreducible or non-reducible or not reducible hernias, right? So this is a hernial sac that cannot be reduced to the abdomen. However, there is no evidence suggesting any other complications. It is often due to adhesions between the hernial sac and its contents or crowding within the hernial sac. Irreducibility without other symptoms is often diagnostic of an omentocele, especially in femoral and umbilical hernias. Obstruction. So this is when the intestine is obstructed and its contents cannot move. This causes the upstream portions of GIT to accumulate food and conditions such as megacolon and abdominal distension can develop. At this stage, blood supply to the bowel or colon is not affected. Incarceration and strangulation. Incarceration. 
This is when herniation becomes irreducible due to blockage by feces, and the intestine is narrowed when it is uh, in the defect, and therefore this predisposes the patient to intestinal obstruction. Strangulated hernia. This results from occlusion of blood supply to the portion of intestine that is herniated. Occlusion of blood supply leads to ischemia followed by infection and these conditions can lead to gangrene. At this stage, the intestine has undergone irreversible damage and has to be removed. Gangrene can develop 6 to 8 hours after uh, presentation of initial symptoms, right? So here I have um, incarcerated hernias versus strangulated hernia, right? So incarcerated hernia is irreducible, painful, blood supply is good, and it mainly causes uh, bowel obstructions. Strangulated hernia. This is irreducible again and is ischemic. It's very important, meaning to say the blood supply is compromised. It's associated with systemic toxicity and the pain continues even after reduction. Etiological classification. Hernias can be congenital, primary, and secondary hernias. Congenital hernias are results from defects as a result of disordered intrauterine development. An example of a congenital hernia is an umbilical hernia. Primary hernias are hernias that result from protrusion of structures or viscera through weak points in their encasement. And secondary hernias are results of protrusion of viscera or structures through defects formed uh, either by uh, poor surgical technique or by trauma. Classification based on location. There is inguinal hernia, femoral hernia, incisional hernia, umbilical hernia, epigastric hernia, uh, spigelian hernia. Right, so we'll talk about these individually.